everybody, Nigel with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench. Welcome back to the channel, and this is a bit of a sort of unusual video for me. I've already done a review of this kit. This is the Hobby Boss A26B Invader in 132nd scale. This is the B version, they also do the C version with the glass nose and the different uh, cockpit glazing. So, if you've seen my review of this kit already, you'll know that it has certain issues. Um, and it's kind of riddled with them. It's one of the accuracy wise, river count, rivet counter wise, it's one of the probably one of the worst kits ever produced, to be honest. Um, it has a hell of a lot wrong with it. And I'm going to point out some of those errors and point out some of the aftermarket and some of the things that are available today um, to correct it. So if, if you want to build one of these, because after all, it is such a beautiful plane. And I mean, it's so action. In World War Two, it's so action in Korea, it's so action in Vietnam, you know, as as the K version, and it's it's just such a you know an amazing aircraft. There's still a couple flying today, and it is beautiful. It's got you know it it, well, it should have <laughs> um, the proper engines in there, and and it's it's just it's absolutely just a, such a gorgeous gorgeous aircraft and it's such a shame that hobby boss have done this in 30 second scale and made such a complete mess of it but um as i say the aftermarket companies are coming along with with stuff to correct it and make it right so without further ado i'm going to get the camera lower down and we'll get the parts out of the box and have a look but uh, this is basically it here the kit number is where is the kit number? It's 83213, and I'm sure you've all heard of it. If you want to get yourself one of these, Hannans have currently got them on sale. They're doing them for like 77 quid, I think it was. I saw that it's absolute, it's 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 a bargain. Um, if you're after a 30 second scale bomber, 77 quid, you know, it's it's bloody great. When you look at that um, Hong Kong Models A20, it's like it's three times that. So, you know, but the Hong Kong Models A20 is a far far nicer kit than this is as far as accuracy goes so uh, and if you stick to my channel subscribe hit the little my little face where is it down here hit that face and you'll um and you'll subscribe to my channel and you'll get to see a build of that coming very very soon as soon as the air scale stuff arrives so i'm going to get into this box we'll look at some of the issues and then we'll look at some of the corrections that are available today some that i've got here and some that i've only got pictures of so uh, I'll see you in a sec. Okay, so we'll start with the, the fuselage. Um, and you'll see straight away here that something's wrong. The actual finish on the plastic is lovely. The rivet detailing is lovely. All the panel lining is really nice. But as you can see here, I've got some tape on here and a line. What Hobby Boss have actually done, they've actually got the wing. It's about five millimeters too low. On the fuselage so when you actually look at the model built up it looks a bit weird because the wing is too low so really what we need to do is lift that wing up um, and you can if you go and look at large-scale planes you'll you'll see Ian on there Ian Ogilvie he's done some work to actually remove the remove the section and replace it with plastic card and then and then basically um, move that up but there is a company that I'm going to talk about later in the video that have actually made a piece that goes in so you can actually cut the section of your model out and then replace it with their with their um, 3d printed resin part job done and it also includes the wing root fillet so you can just glue the stock model wings onto the um, onto that part of course then you've got issues then with your undercarriage legs so the undercarriage legs are here uh, well, they know they're, they're here on this little sprue here. So obviously if you lift your wing up Then your undercarriage legs are going to need to be lengthened and as you can see here We've got the undercarriage legs and they're sort of hollowed out in two pieces Now again, there's another problem um, They've got disc brakes on the undercarriage legs. The A26B had drum brakes. So this is actually all incorrect So again, I'll, I'll, I'll bring it up as a company that's made undercarriage legs that are longer to take account of the actual fact that the wings have moved up. Now that's something you could probably do yourself. Um, you could actually extend them with some brass rod or whatever, um, and that would that would be all great. But you need to sort out something about these wheels. Now, I'm not sure I need to look into it, but CMK do some wheels and Edward do some wheels as well. Um, but 
if they've just gone along with the disc brake design that is only correct for an A26K and it would appear that what Hobbybus have done here with their research they've actually gone and used an A26K for reference and got a bit mixed up because for example here on the fuselage you can see there's nowhere for a turret a ventral turret on here um, whereas most A26Bs had a turret on there some didn't but most did so uh, again there's a resin set for that um, you'll also see here we've got two cockpit seats that's incorrect there shouldn't be two cockpit seats there should only be one because it's a B um, moving along to the nose and the cockpit everything's looking good uh, the instrument panel is actually incorrect the instrument panel needs to be cut in half I'll cover a set in a minute that looks at that uh, the nose has eight guns um, the original A26Bs only had six in a different array, so something else you need to look into. But basically, other than that, you've got the control um, wheels there are actually incorrect. Again, there's some resin to replace them, um, and there should only be one, not two, unless, of course, you're doing a K. So if you actually wanted to convert this into an A26K, it would probably be not too difficult because... The A26K didn't have the ventral turret. Um, it had the double uh, cockpit seats. It had the double instrument panel. I'm not sure how accurate that is to a K. But uh, basically, yeah, if, if, if you want to build a K out of this, it probably wouldn't be too bad. When we come on to the clear parts, you can see here we've got our, our clear parts wrapped in typical trumpeter foam, which is very, very nice indeed. Or... I say trumpeter hobby boss same company but um when it comes to the when the clear parts they are beautifully made but the framing is wrong uh the framing here is all incorrect that's an easy job sand the framing off uh, make some masks the correct shape and then mr surfacer build up a frame job done no problem as yet no one has come up with a corrected set of uh, clear parts but um it has been talked about i have spoken to alistair over at aircraft and he has been thinking about it but this kit's been out a few years now and nothing's happened yet so uh, so there we go we've got the tires here we've got vinyl tires um obviously no lettering on them whatsoever no um weight on them no flat spots on the bottom so really I mean, we all hate vinyl tires. I don't know why kit manufacturers keep using them. But uh, resin wheels are available. As I say, CMK do a set and Edward do a set. But I need to look into the accuracy of the, um, of the braking system. So here we've got our engine nacelles. And these are all good. More about these in a minute. But they all look good. If you ask me, these look a bit blunt. I think they should be a bit more pointy. But um, I don't know. We shall see. But um, apparently the internal detail that Hobby Boss give you in the kit is completely and utterly fictional. And again, a resin company has come up with new um, internals. There is also an, a photo etch set for the internals. So something else to look into. Uh, here we've got the... <laughs> here we go then. Right. This, this sprue is a complete and utter disaster. We've got the engines here. They've depicted our 2600 uh, engines and they should have our 2800 engines. So they've got um, too few cylinders, which is a shame. They've got seven cylinders instead of nine. Uh, so they've got a um, 14 cylinder engine instead of an 18 cylinder engine. Go figure. Um, they're not actually that nice either. The And, and the cowling is the wrong shape. Um, it's, it's it's too tapered it should sort of if I could just try and describe it a bit better it should sort of come along straighter and then go in at the end so it wouldn't be too much of a job to do to make it look better but it should sort of come along it should, it's kind of like that and it should be more like that sort of thing so it's like that and it should be one of like that so hopefully you understand that again resin company has come along with that Propellers are way too small. I think they're about seven millimeters per blade too short So you could do what I did on the b24 and extend them or get just get aftermarket. I think Harold does them um, So there we go. Uh, you've also got plastic gun barrels here, which aren't the nicest, but uh, there we are and we've got bombs 
Hopefully they're okay. I think the um, the gearbox on the front of the engine is all incorrect as well for the for the period of the model depicted. And you've got another sprue there with all the same stuff on it. I use stuff as being a polite word. Um, here we've got the um, the backs of the engine. So your 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 actual um, engine. Where are we? That is going to basically go on there using that as the back of the engine mount that's going to go on there but you can see these there's one two three four five six seven hang on one two three four five six seven eight so they got the wrong number of cutouts on there and that's for the exhausts the exhausts come out of there the exhausts are like three fingers I think they're three fingers or four fingers that come out and there's no exhaust so Hobby Boss have done another P61. Uh, P61 has no exhaust either. So when that goes on there, you've got this lovely gap all around the edge. You can see there. If I get that sort of central, you can see there. There's a lovely gap all around, and that's just going to be full of emptiness. So yeah. So there's another issue. Again, there is resin available. I'll cover it in a minute. Moving on to the wings, yes, there's issues with every bloody sprue. Moving on to the wings, um, detail on there is lovely. Okay, there's lovely rivet detail and, and, and squide panel lines and everything. It looks very, very nice. The trouble is, I'll put a picture up now, you can see that this here is completely wrong. It looks like they've got the engines mounted too high in the wing. Um, probably because they got the wing too low. And when they actually looked at their CAD models, they probably thought, hang on a minute. It looks like the engines are sitting down too close to the wheels. So they've lifted the engines up rather than lifting the whole lot up. And um, hence we've got the this here. As yet, I know of no one that's done a conversion for this, a correction. There could be a resin cutout piece that could go in there. You could completely replace the inner wing, perhaps. Because again, there's no inner flaps. So... <laughs> They've done great here. Um, there's no flap detail in there at all. They've just got like panel detail. You've got flaps there, you've got ailerons there, but there's no flaps here. So, again, oh dear. And as I say, as yet, no one has done that. Um, I might have a look at doing something with that. We shall see, but uh, I'm not sure if that's within my scope, my scope of capabilities. This sprue here... Uh, not sure there's anything particularly wrong on here. We've got flaps. Um, I'm not sure there is anything wrong with this. The all this detail here can be removed. And you can replace it with photo etch. I'll show you that in a minute. But uh, everything's looking good on that sprue. So there's one sprue that may well be okay. But if you know there's something wrong on there, please let me know in the comments below. Um, here we have the the tail. Uh, these are the tail planes. Uh, oh, sorry, no, this is the tail. This is the actual tail itself. And under here we have detail. We have under here. This is our Bombay, interior Bombay detail. Not sure how accurate that is. I'm sure it's probably pretty good. Again, it can all be tarted up with photo etch and stuff. Um, here we've got parts of our undercarriage, which looks pretty spindly, um, but uh, could be replaced. Um, and we've got lovely detail there on the fin and as far as I know the fin is good Bombay doors are lovely no ejector pin marks very nicely molded so they're all looking good so hopefully that's all accurate as well so maybe there's another sprue that's good but uh, overall there's lots and lots of issues um, here we have another sprue which I believe is all good this is all our, um, this is the undercarriage base for the main undercarriage. And as you can see, it's just, yeah, garbage. So again, a resin company has come to the rescue. And the final sprue I've got here, these are the lower wings. And I know that this here needs to be all cut about. Um, this is all very very nice i believe it's correct these air intakes on the leading edges of the wings are a joke again we'll go back to that in a minute um and also something else worth looking at 
the engine nacelles are going to sit up in these recesses in here okay uh, and they're obviously up too high it all needs to be brought down and as I said nobody has really done anything about that yet but um we shall see I'm also looking here I think this is is that the rudder which is not correct either so that's something else that needs to be looked at I'm not sure if that's the rudder or if that's the bottom half of the ailerons um, not sure but um anyway there's the tailplanes yeah we shall see but anyway um, enough of the kit let's start looking at some stuff we can get to correct it sorry guys I forgot there's one other sort of pretty major flaw with this fuselage which would cause you a lot a lot of nightmares so most people would just ignore it the actual profile here is way too round it should be much squarer in fact if you look at the box front you can see on the box front they've got the design a lot better they've got it a lot sharper and if you look the wing is actually higher up as well if you compare if you compare the actual plastic part to the what you're getting in the kit to the actual um, box art you can see that wing is much higher up you can look at look at the front of the wing root look at the position of the wing root here in relation to it there okay and uh, also you can see here this glazing should come lower down um, and you can see here that this is way too rounded it should be a lot lot sharper so um, I mean really the, the best thing we could hope for is someone else could do another version of bring this kit out because um, this thing is just it's just awful but you know hey it is what it is and it's the only other than the Tigger um, the ID Vax model, um, the Vac form one, there's nothing else available if you want an A26 in 36 scale. So there we are. So anyway, as I say, looking at the um, looking at what's available, uh, the first thing I'm going to talk about are the decals or decals. This is the One Man Army set, and I've actually, although One Man Army sends me his stuff for free, I've actually bought these. I found them on eBay. Uh, Mastercasters was the shop and they were selling them for like $16.99 which is a bargain price if you look at the decals on the kit one they're hobby boss so they're going to be horrible uh, two they are not um, correct you will notice first of all there is no stencil data okay there is no olive drab option so that's that's not possible to do um, those stars and bars just don't look right to me so it just looks wrong with them. And also, if you look at one of the versions of the kit, uh, where is the, I've got it here, I've got the colour call out thing here, here it is. When you look at this version here, which is AJ, okay, this one is from, do, 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 do. this is from the Mission, Mission Complete A26B, and it's in the Brussels Museum. It's 434765 is the registration number, as you can see on there. But it's actually ANJ, not AJ. So um, they just got AJ, and this set gives you ANJ. So there you go. Um, so that's one major issue. And as I say, the actual Hobby Boss decals are normally awful. So, uh, so there we go. Um, go and look at my Spitfire build and have a look at the uh, decals on that. They're bloody like leather trying to put them down. They're terrible. So, um, so this set here, this is from One Man Army. And as you know, I've featured lots of his stuff. This is one of his earlier, earlier sets. And it's a little bit different to the later stuff. Uh, I must say the later stuff has improved. Um, oh, stop playing that. Come on. Just because I've got the camera on. So, basically, we've got a set here, as I've shown you before. You have some kabuki tape masks. And as you can see there, I can catch them in the light. They are beautifully done. And you have the different sections. And all these rectangles are exactly the same size. So, you, you basically spray one colour and you lay that down. And you weed and transfer and everything. If you want to get more detail about weeding and transferring, go look at a video I did last week on the the Kotari Spitfire 
I did a, a, a video all about that one, uh, the Spitfire, the Qatari Spitfire set. So go and have a look at that. And if you're still here and you're interested in um, these one man army masks, go and look at Zin, Zin Zan scale modeling. He's actually building the Qatari uh, Spitfire. He's nearly finished and I've actually sent him those masks to use on his build. So um, see how he gets along with that. You've got a user manual which gives you all the bits and pieces, the tips and using transfer tape and everything. I'm not going to go into depth um, on this one, but you know, I've done it on lots of other ones and I will be doing it again. And you've got your walkway stencils there. So all you do there is just weed out the walkway, put transfer tape over the top, peel that away, put it on your model, take the transfer tape away and then you'll have that walkway there to spray. So that'll be really, really nice and so much better than using anyone's decals, let alone Hobby Boss. It's even nicer than using cartograph decals. So that's the um, that's the decals and markings and stencils. And the other thing I forgot to show you on here, as I say, there are no stencil deep decals in the kit at all. But you can see down here, when you look on this sheet, you can see... There are literally hundreds, not literally hundreds, but tens of stencils here to go on that are completely missing from the kit. Uh, and you've also got your bomb stencils there as well. You've got your um, mission markings there. You've got the mission completed marking there. So uh, it's all good. All good and lovely. And again, you've got the correct A-N rather than the A. So, um, yeah great balls up there and the other thing is in this set which I just also forgot to mention they give you an option you can look on uh, if you're on Google you will find pictures of this you've got an olive drab A26B 55 DL 13th bomber um, bomber squadron third bomber group at Sugi Japan late 45 and if you look at it that aircraft actually doesn't have the ventral turret so you don't need to worry about that but it does have the later domed canopy, so you would need to get one of them somehow. Uh, so um, if you want to build it accurately. So a few little things to look into there. So that's the decals and that taken care of. So that can all go away back in the box. Um, we also have uh, here, I have some Edward. There's an Edward Big Ed set here. So we've got the uh, part one. Okay, it's big 313119. So this is the cockpit interior, the rear interior, and the invader seat belts in steel, which are not very nice. Uh, you've got the invader undercarriage, we've got the bomb bay, and we've got the invader masks there. So that's all very nice. Although the masks will be incorrect if you want to build an accurate model because the masks will be made to fit the kit, which of course Edward has to do. So there you go. So, um, Basically in here, you're getting your normal Edward Big Ed sets. Let's do number one first, shall we? Because that would make more sense. Um, so we've got number one here, and this has got the, this has got the, this is the rear interior. So we've got some pre-colored photo etch there for, uh, for some fuse panels or whatever. And then you've got all the um, the extra etch to add detail and stuff. When it comes to interiors with, with sheet metal and stuff in these aircraft, photo etch is generally the better way to go because it is actually almost scale thickness and it's exactly how it should be. And uh, it does look really, really good. And you've got a seat there. You can see that's going to be lovely. Um, we have the masks there. Oh, that's the seat belt, sorry. That's the steel seat belt. If I could just get them to come down. You can see there, I've never used these. I've used the brass seat belts. The, the, for me, the biggest disadvantage, they're only printed on one side and they're very, very difficult to make them sort of lay down unless, of course, you anneal them. But because they're pre-painted, you can't anneal them because you'll destroy the paint. So you pay your money, takes your choice. Maybe I should try these sometime and see what they're like. I'd much rather use HGW, to be honest. And then here we have the cockpit interior. And this is, I'll show you the instructions in a minute. This is well worth getting if you want to build an A26B because this doesn't just fit the kit. Okay, so like, you know, if you've got stuff which is incorrectly made, like the masking set has to fit the kit, this actually corrects the kit rather than just fits it. So um, this is really nice because it turns the 
the cockpit into a single seat rather than the, the twin seat which is which is incorrectly made in the model um, as you can see here if I show you the cockpit in the kit we've got the Edward stuff there uh, here you can see you've got two seats next to each other very much like a B17 sort of thing and you've got your two um, control yokes there totally incorrect for an A26B they weren't like that so the Edward set corrects that and then that's set one and then going forward we've got set two and in set two we have I knew they'd come out we have the masks so not really much to see here but that's just going to be window masks we have the undercarriage so this is the nose gear roof undercarriage roof we have some framing there to go in the main main gear wells we have uh, detail there for the inside of the gear doors um, and I think that's about that so really if you want to get accurate undercarriage bays on your main wheel bays you're gonna to have to go down the resin route which I'll show you in a minute but um really you know it depends how far you want to go and then here we have the A26B bomb base we've got bomb bay doors there we've got some detail going inside lots of little bits and brackets and stuff you can see we've got hangers and that there and then that's the um, that's for the turret that area there so it's all very very nice indeed we've got some grills there as well um, I'm sure there's more than just that in this set we'll have a look at the instructions now as I said because the instructions will show us everything we need to know about what you're getting with your Edward photo etch so going into the instructions uh, do -ba -do -ba -do -ba -do. starting here this is the undercarriage okay so obviously we've got invader undercarriage here so you can see you've got the photo etch there going on to the door to replace the detail on the door we've got a stiffener which is going to go in that's going to add a bit more accuracy but this is just garbage um, you're removing all the detail from the plastic under may, uh, front undercarriage roof and the side walls and then you're going to put this embossed look into the photo etch and then here you're going to put that complete tray into the um, interior door interior bay there and make it all look very very lovely indeed uh, I don't quite know why they're telling you to remove all this detail and then there's nothing to replace it it's a bit strange okay um, probably so you can slide that down in but I'd be tempted to leave that detail on there if it's correct and there on that back wall as well you've got nothing oh you've got obviously you've got the end walls there but there's nothing to go in the sides you've got these little bits here check your references see what's correct and what's not um, so that's that one we've got the mask in there so obviously you've all seen masking before the rear interior so this is where the the gunner sits and he would operate the the uh, dorsal turret and the um, ventral turret through a camera so you've got lots and lots of bits and pieces of detail going in there it's all going to look very nice you've got a support there for his seat and then you've got the side panels going in there again this sheet metal looks looks amazing uh, again you've got a sheet metal panel there it's going to look absolutely lovely and you've got this grill going onto the back of the bomb bay there where the uh, dorsal turret should be so that's all very nice and then we've got the seat belts you've all seen seat belts before you're going to fold them up put them into position um, we've got here this is the invader cockpit interior this is if you get one Edward set for this kit this is the one to get because this as I say it corrects the cockpit so we're telling you how to put ridges in how to make bulged panels and also how to make the uh, relief on the opposite side of the panel so obviously they're going to be covering that so you've got a lot of detail here going in the side wall um, and then we've got the uh, jump seat going onto the um, onto the right side of the cockpit the, the uh, starboard side and that could actually be folded up as well if you want to play with it um, there's also a resin one available for that they're telling you to remove all this incorrect detail here from the cockpit floor and then you've got replacement brass cockpit floors going in lots and lots of detail for the center console and then you've got the control column here going on which is completely inaccurate and you can replace it with uh, with resin um, and then here we have all the actual throttle levers and everything going into the center console you're going to replace all that, that 
incorrectly molded plastic. You're going to replace the actual frame for the seat or adjust the frame for the seat. Add some photo etch. There's just the one seat to go in and that's that. And then over the page, you've got one lot of rudder pedals going in and we're going to cut the half the instrument panel off. We're going to cut half the console off. We're going to add this corrected instrument panel and then we've got a closing panel there going in the side with a box on with some gauges there. So all very nicely done indeed. So that's going to go like that. Then we've got the bomb bay. Uh, we're going to remove some vertical ribbing there for the uh, hangers for the bombs. We've got some grills here to go in the actual wings, in the leading edge of the wings, but they're a mess anyway. Um, and then you've got this part here you're going to use to drill some holes because all the holes in that plastic part I showed you just now, they're all incorrect. So you're going to make the holes correct and then put the photo etch on. And then this is all for the turret and that's your ammo bins and everything there. So uh, there we go. And then we've got the actual, um, you can see here there's the, 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 uh, the turret going in, the fuselage is upside down. So this is all detail you're going to see from inside the bomb bay. And then you've got the um, the bomb racks there going in, all very nice. And then you've got detail there going into the bomb bay doors. Not sure if the detail, in the, in the, looking at this, it looks like they've got the bomb bay interior door detail incorrect. But uh, obviously check your references, I'm not sure which is which, which is correct and which is wrong. Um, but there we go, so that's, that's the photo etch detail. So um, now we are going to get into some real serious stuff it's quite expensive but it's very very nice and i don't have the parts physically here to show you but i have images i have spoken to resin 2 detail it's the company that makes all the stuff and they are going to come back to me about maybe collaborating on something we should have a look but basically um they do this if you remember i said this fuselage is all incorrect here now to correct the shape of the fuselage up here the squareness would involve new clear parts for both the canopy and this part back here which would be a complete nightmare so I think what the companies are having to do is stay with the profile so that we can keep using our clear parts maybe somebody will come up with a completely corrected canopy rear section and center section we shall see I don't see that happening to be honest because it would be such a massive investment for a company to do and probably the returns would be very, very limited. Um, but I, I have looked around, if you look at large scale planes, most people are saying they're going to ignore this and just stick with it, you know, as it is, but they're, they're doing other modifications. So you can modify this yourself or you can get this resin 2 detail set and I'll put a picture up now. And as you can see, it's a complete replacement upper section for that fuselage. So you're going to basically going to cut out, they give you instructions on where to cut, you're going to cut it out and you're going to put it back in, replace that section of the fuselage and it's going to give you the correct position of the wing because the wing is not only too far down, it's also too far back so it brings it forward and up. So that's a very good thing. The only thing is with that, when you do that, obviously your undercarriage legs are going to be too short. So you can either stick with the stock parts, extend your undercarriage legs or you can buy the complete undercarriage set which I'm showing you here now which is a complete new set of in inners for the under for the main um, the main uh, engine cells so you've got complete new undercarriage bays which are accurate rather than the rubbish that you're getting with the kit and they're going to look absolutely lovely my only concern is they're 3d printed undercarriage legs which are obviously made longer to account for the fact the wing has moved up but I don't know if they're going to be strong enough. So, um, pays your money, takes your choice, have a look. I guess you could always drill them out and put some brass rod in there. The emission of the belly turret is going to bother a lot of people because it, a lot of A26Bs and Cs had a belly turret. So, Resident 2 Detail have come up with a, um, with a belly turret. So here you are, complete set. You've got the belly turret there. You've got all the detail inside, the ammo boxes and everything. And it's going to completely replace the lower section of the fuselage. So you'll have a lovely turret hanging at the bottom of your A26, which would be really nice. Now when it comes to engines, um, you've got the engines with the... So you've got a cheaper version here, which is just the face of the engine. So if you just want to build the kit... As it is, but you want the correct engines to replace the rubbish you get in the kit because it's 
not very nice and it's wrong um, you get this this is just the engine face or you can go for the full engine which is absolutely gorgeous so if you want to actually have the cowlings completely off and have the engines displayed in a kind of maintenance diorama then you can with those full engines they're going to look lovely or you can get the full set which is the complete replacement engines and the cowlings and you can see you've got the back part of the cowling you've got the front part of the cowling you've got the engine mounting parts if you like and you've actually got the actual cowling itself and the engines as well so that for me is the one to go for because it's probably the best priced out of the lot um, and that's really really nice you've then got the exhausts so the exhausts are um, as I say completely missing in the kit so it's not a case of replacing something that's inaccurate like I showed earlier with the Spitfire 124th exhaust for the re replacement 124th Airfix exhaust on this kit they just ain't there so I think these are a must so um, at the minimum I would get these uh, and then you've got the wing intakes and I'm showing them here and you can see them there compared to the plastic parts you can see how much nicer they are the wing intakes on the kit are awful um, but these resin ones are beautiful you've also got a control column so they come in pairs so if you're building a K then they'll be correct for you but I've got a feeling that the control columns and the yokes that you've got in the kit are probably correct for a K but certainly they're not correct for a B but you are getting two of them because they're going along with the kit this is what these aftermarket people have to do they can't just give you one because people are saying well the kit's got two but you know people will happily build it incorrectly with the two seats so there's your con uh, con control column. You've also got a centre console which is made in um, 3D printed resin. So there's another option for you other than the Edward if you want to go down that route. Um, personally, I think I'll probably use the Edward. Um, but I'll probably get one of these as well and see how it looks. And then finally we've got the jump seat. As I say, that comes in the Edward set as well. Uh, but a little resin one is going to be a lot easier because and it's going to look a lot nicer because you won't have the nice... Um, you know round legs and everything that you're going to get on the resin one you won't get that in the uh, in the photo etch one so um there you go and it's, it's it's very cheap as well and with some careful cutting you could have it folded up if you want to so basically with this with the a26b you had the pilot sitting on the left and then you had a um a sort of open gangway along the right hand side of him so that the turret the, the rear gunner could actually walk through the bomb bay if the bomb bay was empty he couldn't walk through if it was full apparently and he could walk through and then uh, you know, look at the guns or whatever or do anything we need to the guns so i believe the pilot was the bomb aimer um but then when they went on to the k and i think probably the c i think possibly the c as well correct me if i'm wrong they actually had a dedicated bomb aimer that had a, had a seat to sit in so um yeah on the b you just had the one seat and on the right was a jump seat for somebody to sit in much like in a lancaster where the engineer just has a little fold down seat and you have the pilot sat on the left so there we go guys that has been a bit of an unusual video i know um but it's basically just going through what is actually wrong with the kit and 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 changing things um and what you can actually get to to modify it and as you can see you, you've got your bomb bay there with all the bombs in and everything you've got your cockpit which is which is incorrect all this detail going in here which you can replace with resin and photo etch and everything um you've got your turret going on the top that is apparently incorrect as well the um the actual fuselage section that moves the wing comes with a corrected turret as well um you need to get yourself some new nose wheel as well because these final tires are horrible um and if you want to change your guns you can easily change it just fill all the holes and re reshape it and everything change your canopy framing uh, they're telling you to put 150 grams of grams of weight in the nose probably put more than that um and then you've got your here we go this is a, this is a page of of direness you got completely wrong engines going into completely wrong shaped cowls with incorrect propellers and then you've got completely wrong <laughs> internals here with bloody horrible vinyl tires i'm not even sure if the wheels are correct and uh, and there you go and you have to extend your undercarriage legs if you need your wing they're telling you here you have to drill holes in the wing check your references not not all all aircraft have these um, wing mounted guns and apparently these pods are way undersized in the kit so um worth checking that out and also those intakes are there they're horrible 
um, you can see they're fitting the engines and everything and then fitting the wings and the tailplane and everything on that wasn't the rudder I was looking at that was obviously ailerons but um, I'm not sure about the accuracy of all this but to me it looks like an A26 but certainly when I look at the if you look on Google at this model built up and you can see it here it just doesn't look right with those wings being so low down and the undercarriage doors sitting over the wheels it all needs to come up um, and if you can, I mean, I hope somebody does it, but it'd be nice to get that area of the fuselage sorted as well and get it all squared off. So anyway, um, there we go. It's another Hobby Boss disaster, I'm afraid. And I know a lot of people have bought this kit and been very disappointed. And a lot of people won't buy it because it's so inaccurate. inaccurate. But also saying that a lot of people will just build it because at the end of the day, it's going to be a lovely model. It's going to fit together beautifully. As I say, the surface detail on it is lovely. It's all nice and sturdy. There's no horrible ejector pin marks anywhere. I mean, you look here, that cockpit is completely ejector pin mark free. This area here is all ejector pin mark free and there. So, you know, it's going to build up into a lovely looking thing. Um, it's just that if you know the A26 and you love the look of it, it don't look much like one. It looks a bit too, just looks a bit too frumpy to me. It all looks a bit bleh. So uh, anyway, there you go. I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope it didn't bore you to death too much. And um, keep your eyes open. As I say, I'll, I'll put some links down below to Resin 2 Detail. Go and have a look at their stuff. And um, if you do actually communicate with them, say, tell them you've seen the video here. Because as I say, they have talked about collaborating with me. So maybe if we can get them some business, maybe they'll send me some stuff. That'd be cool. And then we can see how it all fits. So, uh, Thanks for watching. As I say, hit that subscribe there, that that image of me, and you can hit that and um, hit my face. There you go, <laughs> which I'm sure some of you would love to do. And um, and you can subscribe to the channel. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up. And if you didn't like the video, hit the thumbs down. So well, I'll see you all soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.